Thanks for waiting, everybody. So, uh, before we get going here, I want to I tell you guys a couple things. So, moving forward from here on out, tonight the prelims were on uh, Fox Sports 2. From now on, they'll be on Fox Sports 1 from here on out. Um, so, like the first night that we went on air, there'll be five hours of, uh, of fighting on Fox Sports 1 when we do these, uh, these fight nights. And Vitor Belfort and Dan Henderson, they're, they're fighting Saturday, November 9th in Brazil. And that fight will be on Fox Sports 1, too. Uh, the attendance tonight was uh, 59.50. The gate was 355 to 90. Fight of the night was Condit versus Campman. KO of the, KO of the night was Thatch. On TV, I called him Thatcher. I apologize for that. Um, and submission of the night is Zach Cummings. Everybody won 50 grand. Congrats to them. These guys will be here in a minute. Who's first? Hey, Dana. How's it going? Good. How are you? Good. Uh, is it safe to say that you enjoyed this trip to Indiana more than you enjoyed 119 three years ago? Yeah. Yeah. Is that one... You came here and then you bailed out of the back. You didn't want to stay and hang out with us at all. I forgot about that. Yeah, we well, no, forget about that. It's good to be here tonight. Yeah, uh, no, it was a good night. Can you give me your thoughts on on Eric Perez? Obviously, a lot of hype on him going into the fight and kind of got taken down a peg. Yeah, you know, it's it happens. Uh, you uh, you never know. I mean, anything can happen on any given night. And then obviously, conversely, you have you know someone like like Thatch who's highly hyped coming in and, and then lives up to it. And I wonder kind of about your guys' thought processes behind the scenes when something like that goes your way versus when something like that doesn't go your way, like maybe like a Hector Lombard or something like that. Well, there, there, there's, there's never a, a goes our way or doesn't go our way. We're in the fight business and we have 475 guys under contract. Whoever wins, wins. And, and, and he's the guy that moves forward. And uh, believe me, I, I, I quit many, many years ago saying, oh, this guy's got to win and that guy's got to win. It's just doesn't work that way. Whoever wins, wins. And reality is better than any, you know, anything you could ever dream up. So Thatch wins tonight. It looks impressive. People are buzzing about him. People are talking about him on Twitter. Tonight's his night. And obviously, this is the one where you say, well, we'll figure that out later. But is that somebody that, since he didn't suffer any damage, obviously, you put him back in there really quick to see what he can yeah, do? Yeah, yeah, no doubt about it. He look, and uh, I was just telling Kelvin on the way in here, Kelvin looked awesome tonight, too. You know, really good tonight. And Kelly, I'll just move on to you really quickly. Obviously, you, know, you talked to us this week about, about the weight cut and being down at 170 for the first time. You seem really comfortable to us, you know, looking at it from the outside with that weight cut. You know, how much did that, did that factor into you, you know, during the fight, and, and how comfortable did you really feel as you got in there tonight? Uh, <clears throat> you know, I, I was working with nutrition guru, <laughs> the master, Mike Dolce. Um, but I felt good, you know. I felt real relaxed. I felt like... Um, like I really belong there, you know. I felt real good, real relaxed. And obviously, being higher, you know, on the tough show didn't didn't affect you whatsoever. But is there a, a part of you ever that wishes you had made that move down sooner? No, <laughs> no, not at all. I mean, everything's been going as planned, and um, you know, I'm here uh, trying to do trying to do best that I can. And, uh, Darren, you know, how badly did he have have you heard in the first round, and, and how much did you feel those kicks? And, was there any point that, you know, panic set in and, and you started to think, you know, what do I need to do to get out of this situation here? Yeah, the, you know, the fir he hit me there maybe three or four times. And the, the first one really didn't affect me. But after, like, the third one, I, it was really starting to affect me. I, you know, I was almost doing a crunch standing up. So, um, yeah, I had a little bit of a panic mode. You know, I kind of grabbed him up and did a little bit of grappling and kind of hung on there and tried to recover there. And, uh, you know, I... When the second round came out, I, you know, my breathing and everything was going better for me, and uh, it worked out good. Is there a part of you at all that wishes you could go back and take back that Mendes fight and not take that fight? I mean, I know you guys a lot of times will say, you know, losing sometimes is, is good for me, but that sets you back a little bit. Um, I don't look as a setback. You know, I had an opportunity to fight somebody that, uh, that most people didn't want to fight. A lot of people didn't want to take that fight. And, you know, I'm a guy that says, hey, I'll fight anybody that they give that they give me. And uh, they offered me the fight. I was healthy after the other fight. And uh, I took it. And it was a good opportunity for me. You know, if I beat Mendez, that would have put me right there in the title picture. But, you know, instead I got knocked out. But, you know, I learned from it. And I'm here and I'm trying to get better each fight. Yep. 
I like that. It's right. He's right. Dana, obviously you have a couple of big welterweight fights in November, but where do you think the performance uh, by Campman tonight uh, puts him? He, he, he dominated a tough opponent. Do you think this puts him right back there for a title shot when the, uh, when the time comes? Do you mean Condit? Condit, yes. Sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, Condit looked great tonight. Um, you know, he, he's one of the best guys in the world. He's always exciting. He, he goes out to finish. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's, he, he's one of the best in the world. So, yeah, he's, he's, he's right there. He's, he, he's going to be there. That makes sense? I you think so. I guess saying, I'm right? just wondering, after, depending on what happens with GSP Hendricks, I mean, that could be a rematch, but would Condit then be possibly the natural next person <coughs> to step up? I don't know. We'll see. But like I said, he's, he's one of the best in the world. He looked, uh, he looked awesome in that Johnny Hendricks fight. He looked awesome in this fight here tonight. And, uh, again, he's another kid. I love his attitude. He's a finisher. He goes in there. He doesn't go in there to go five rounds. He goes in to finish you. So anything is possible. Then uh, Evelyn Rodriguez from Global.com uh, Brazil. I uh, just want to ask you uh, your thoughts on uh, Cerrone and Desanjo's fight. Yeah, it was a, uh, you know, it was a good fight. A couple of tough guys, you know, closely ranked, and uh, you know, it was a big win for him tonight. And uh, Rafael, uh, I'm gonna ask him for it again. Sorry. It's okay. Você pode falar um pouquinho? Na verdade, você não era favorito para essa luta e acabou que você conseguiu uma vitória muito importante hoje, talvez a mais importante da sua carreira. Você pode falar um pouquinho sobre o que estava passando na sua cabeça ali dentro do octógono e a importância do seu corner hoje? Do me a favor, translate for yourself there. Oh. I asked him about like uh, he was not really the favorite one for this fight tonight and uh, he he had a, a big win. If he could talk about like what was going through his mind and also if he could explain as well the importance of his corner. Yeah, <clears throat> he got a a better better position there ranking than me, and <clears throat> that was a big chance for me to prove everyone that that I'm I'm a top contender, and I've been working hard for that. And I don't want to lose the chance. I got the best best corners in the world. I got a man, a great team, and. I just, I just, my thought was, I, I, I can, I can miss this opportunity. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta beat this guy. Yeah, just, just one thing that I, that I've been thinking. Court, I was wondering if you could talk to us a little about the, the decision that came down because it was really wacky. One judge thought you won every round. One judge thought you lost every round. How do you rate yourself on that fight? Well, I was pretty surprised too, but uh, it comes back to the thing you said after my last fight, Dana, you don't leave it in the hands of the judges. You try and come out and finish, you do the best you can do, and that's all you can do. Uh, and sometimes, you know, it happens like that, but I was able to come out with a W and stick in it and grind it out and do the best I could do. How bad is the eye right now? Is it uh, damaged? Is there an orbital bone broken or anything? Nope. There's some stitches and swollen. All right. Darren, I was wondering if you could uh, talk to us about that reaction you got. It was one of the best all night long, and it was very early in the card. So how did that make you feel, and uh, what's it like fighting in front of a, a hometown crowd like that? Um, it felt great, you know. Obviously, when everybody's cheering for me, fighting in my home state, um, the drilling was flowing really heavily, and uh, you know, excited to see my friends, family, and you know, just a crowd like that cheering for me. So what's next after this? Do you want to keep fighting in Indianapolis like GSP always fights in Montreal? <laughs> I doubt it. I'm just, I'm just ready to fight. You know, I'm sure I'm going to be fighting in a lot of different places. So you know, it was nice to fight back at home, but I'm willing to fight other places too for sure. And you know, as for next, I, you know, I don't know. I just got done you know, fighting. I'm just going to sit down and rest a little bit, and hopefully I get another top opponent and uh, put myself in the mix. All right, Kelvin? You've uh, won the Ultimate Fighter. You've won on a main card now, right here. Oh. And uh, do you think you've shed the underdog thing now? You're going to have to be the favorite in fights going forward? Um, I really can't say. I don't know where everybody puts me in, you know, in their, whether they pick me as a favorite or an underdog. I just know that I'm coming into this fight, uh, into every fight, just thinking the same, that, that I'm going to knock them out or submit them. Are you looking for a top 10 fight next, or do you think that's a little ways away yet? 
I'll fight anybody, but um, you know, it's up to to um, Dan and Joe. Obviously, I'm still new, and um, uh, it's probably still a way. All right, Dana. Um, you sound like you were very pleased with the quality of the fights. What did you think about the crowd? And put it in context. Does it help or hurt Indianapolis to host an event going forward? No, it was great. I, I thought the crowd was great tonight. Very educated crowd. You know, you see when guys were going for submissions, they knew what was going on. And uh, for the main event, the place was, was rocking, so it was great. So you were pleased overall then? Yeah, no, very happy, yep. Okay. You know, we're going out. We're, we face this, uh, I guess I'll call it a challenge now, going out on Wednesday nights as, as opposed to Saturday nights. Um, but this is what our partner wants, and we'll, we'll make it work. You know, if, this, we, if we were here on a Saturday night, this is one of those markets where people will drive in from all different places and they make a whole weekend of it. You guys know how the, how the UFC works and how it goes. On a Wednesday night, nobody's driving anywhere on a Wednesday night, man. They've got to go to work in the morning. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll figure this thing out. Is another challenge with these Wednesday cards is like you've got a, a, another UFC card Saturday night in Milwaukee. Which is really not that far from here. I mean, right. people, some people may have said, oh, let's not drive in Indy. Maybe I'll drive in Milwaukee and stuff. Right. Is that another challenge with these Wednesday cards? No, not really. I just didn't want to fly that far after this fight. I'm kidding. That's not why we did it. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> it, you know, it, it, I, I don't think so. We're, we're there this weekend because it's the Harley Davidson 110th anniversary. And, uh, you know, there's going to be a ton of people there for this, uh, for this weekend. So there's all kinds of things going on there, concerts and the UFC and Harley rides and, uh, you know, it's going to be crazy. So, yeah, we, we won't face any problems there. Hey, Carlos, everybody here. Congratulations on the win. Thanks. I know you've had a chance to avenge the loss in the past. Does a win like that feel any different than a regular fight? Um, I don't know. I'm still processing it. So, you know, maybe ask me in a few days. <laughs> yeah. um, Martin came out very early on, kind of charged at you, take down, looked like he wanted to keep the fight on the mat the whole time. Were you surprised that that's what he does? I mean, he's known more for his striking, although he is a good wrestler. Were you surprised with his game plan? Uh, no, I wasn't surprised. I mean, you know, my last two fights, you know, I haven't been able to stop the takedown. And, you know, initially in, the, in this fight, you know, I wasn't either. But, you know, w once we got going, um, I was able to stop more takedowns and start implementing, implementing my game. Why were you suddenly able to stop him after the first round? First round, I think he was four for five after that. Uh -huh. really struggled. What was the difference? Um, I don't know. Maybe I just got warmed up or maybe he's getting tired. Couldn't tell you. Uh, quick one for Raphael. Is there someone you'd like to fight next after beating a, a top six? Uh, I think Donald was ranked sixth. Who would you like to fight next? Yeah, I have no idea right now. I, you know, whatever. Then I said I'm, I will be ready to fight. Uh, for Kelvin, can you talk us a little bit through the finishing sequence? You, you heard him. Uh, a lot of times you see guys go for the ground and pound finish. You immediately went for the choke. What did you see there? Uh, why, why that? Yeah, you know, I, I, I noticed that I rocked him, and um, I didn't want to give him a chance to, to recover. You know, I hit, you know, you see a lot of guys, they hit him and they, they recover um, just <laughs> off of the hit, you know. Um, and I didn't want to give him that chance. And, and I saw the choke, I saw the opening, and, and took it. Carlos, uh, earlier this week, Martin was telling us how he needed to break out of his slow start streak. He'd had a couple slow starts in a row. Do you feel like he had an uncharacteristic fast start tonight, or did you have a, a slow start that, that surprised you? Um, you know, he, he got the takedown, and you know, he kind of took control initially. Um, yeah, I guess, you know, yeah, he, he started out fast. Um, but, you know, I kind of weathered the storm. You know, he didn't put me in, in really any trouble. I guess he took my back in the first. But I, you know, I, I got, got through that and then, you know, I, you know, obviously was able to turn the fight around. Was there a point where you felt him slowing down at all and where you felt yourself like, all right, this is really going in my, in my direction now? I can start uh, to take over. Going, yeah, going into the second round, I, I well, I, I don't know. I, I felt like I was coming alive. And... Uh, yeah, and, and yeah, so I would say the second round. And then <clears throat> Martin, right down here. Uh, I was just asking Carlos, you know, you talked to us early this week about wanting to break out of your slow starts that you had the first two fights, and it appeared like you did that tonight. 
Was there a point where you felt the tide turning, where, where you felt things starting to go Carlos' way? Yeah, I mean, I, I got the fast start I wanted uh, and got off the bat, but uh, I, I gassed myself out completely. After the first round, I, I didn't feel I had nothing left, left. I just went in survival mode. I felt I was, uh, I was just dead tired after that first round. I could feel Carlos kept pushing a strong pace, and, and uh, you know, I wanted to keep pushing too, but I didn't have, I didn't have gas in the, in the tank for it. And I've been working hard on my cardio, and I've been feeling great. So, it, you know, I, I, I was going hard five rounds in training, and uh, you know, sometimes, sometimes the adrenaline dump or whatever. But uh, I, I didn't have the, the gas left after the first one. And you feel like that's a direct result of, of wanting to come out much faster than you did the last two times? If, if what? Do you feel like that, like gassing out earlier than you than you wanted to, was a direct result? Of, of wanting to come out faster this time? I mean, the faster you start, the faster you're going to get tired too, right? Mm. But, um, you know, I wanted to come out and, and, and start good. I felt, you know, I did good the first round and uh, got the takedown, so I wanted. I didn't get the finish I wanted, and uh, and uh, I got tired and uh, couldn't keep up with the pace he was, he was going at. That's how we won. Kelvin, Victor Balah of a Russian Chicago magazine. Um, what was your plan going into this fight? Um, just maybe because of the huge weight loss, you wanted to finish the fight earlier? Or what's with the original plan? Or do you want to go on the distance? No, um, me and my team, we came up with, the, with, the, with a game plan. I went in there and I executed it. You know, uh, We were ready for wherever the fight went. Um, uh, I mean, I'm in great shape. I would have gone 15 minutes hard if it would have gone the 15 minutes. I uh, just went in there and... Um, Try to mix it up, and you know I got him with some good shots. When we talked earlier this week, you were saying you were coming down from 205. Right now, after the fight, are you going to get back some weight, or like Mike Dolce is saying, you're going to uh, be in, into this lifestyle style going forward? Yeah, definitely. You know, I want to be, I want to be ready if uh, Joe or Dana calls. You know, in like three or four weeks, I want to stay ready and um, stay lean. And the next one is for Quirk. What was the biggest problem that your opponent offered you that you couldn't overcome during the fight? I mean, any time I was backing up, he started landing punches. So, you know, that uh, it was, it's hard to push forward the whole time, but I tried to do the best, and that was our game plan, it was just to angle and push forward and get him against the cage and rough him up, take him down. And, uh, you know, it doesn't always happen the way you plan. You just have to adjust to... You know, whatever goes on in the cage, you can go through a lot of emotions and you go through a lot of training. And, you know, I've been doing martial arts for 20 years and uh, things don't happen exactly the way you think they should, but you have to be able to adjust. And that's what I tried to do. I just know backing up, I didn't do as good as going forward. And my last one for Martin. Martin, coming out from this fight, what would you do differently going into the next one? Is it going to be a difference in your preparation or maybe just the pace of the fight? Or maybe you just come out and pick your form? at their own time? Um, I don't know, what was the last part you said? Or maybe you just, you know, when you guys train in, you come into a peak your form, but sometimes you don't time it wisely, and you kind of miss this peak, and you're over-training, and you're over-exhausting you yourself. You know what, I, I, felt, I felt great in training. I felt I was in great shape. I was going five hard, uh, you know, killer pace in training, but, um, you know, Carlos, he, he kept pushing a, a pace, and uh, after that first round, I, I just got dead tired, and uh, I couldn't keep up with the pace, and I was, I was, I was tired. I was really tired, and uh, it doesn't feel good to get tired in a fight, especially when the other guy's pushing forward, but then you just got to dig deep and, and keep going and, uh, and keep fighting. But, you know, I, I, felt that, uh, I felt that I was pretty damn tired, but, uh, you know, hats off to Carlos. He did a good job. Derek St. Paul from YCN. This is for Daniel. Um, yeah, to me, it, two fighters, everyone who won do well, but two fighters who kind of stick out to me are Raphael and Calvin. In your, in, your, in your mind, what are some matchups you're seeing for them coming off these performances? I don't know. You, you know, I never like to make fights the night of the, the, night of the fight. Um, but obviously, 
you know, he, he, he moved up today in, 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 the, in, in the rankings. And then as far as him, the, you know, somebody asked him earlier about what's next. He had jumping into the top ten. You know, the kid won the ultimate fighter, and he just won a fight here tonight. He's 21 years old. Um, you know, uh, I'm, not, I'm not saying we're not going to give him a, a top-rated opponent, but, you know, you got to let the kid – let the kid get some fights under his belt, and we'll see what happens. And no one's mentioned it yet. I thought I would. I saw it on Twitter you mentioned that the, in the Roger Bowling fight that you thought that it was not an illegal kick. It was a little hard from some angles on, on press row to see. It, it, it um, literally was not illegal. It was not an illegal knee. That kid won the fight, and uh, I want to pay him his win. Uh, Carlos. Uh, Second knee hit him in the shoulder. Uh, Carlos, where do you feel you fit now into the title picture? <clears throat> um, I think that, you know, I, I, I solidified myself as, as a contender. Um, um, yeah, I, I, I think that, you know, I'm, I'm still, uh, you know, maybe maybe a fight away from, uh, from another title shot, I hope. Darren, you talked about the pros of fighting so close to home. Are there any cons? Yeah, I mean, obviously people are going to want tickets or want to hang out with you beforehand. And, you know, it's more of a, you know, a little bit more stressful in that reason. But, you know, I just kind of, you know, just shelter myself from that. You know, my wife helps me out with that. She takes care of a lot of things. And uh, that's, you know, that's definitely a con. Everybody wants tickets, or wants, you know, where to buy tickets or you meet up with you before the fight or something like that. Uh, court. Got a question for you. You're uh, you're in the same boat as Kelvin in the sense that you won tough at 185. You dropped 170. You both won tonight. Is this a guy that's on your radar, or are you looking for somebody a little more established in the welterweight division? Um, I don't I don't pick the fights. Joe does. Joe Silva does. And so when he calls and you know I, I just line him up and get ready and come out and do the best I can do. All right, Kelvin. Last question. What's the uh, most useful thing you've learned from your tough coach, Chael Sonnen? Um, <clears throat> it'd probably be, um, you know, he tells me that for a fight, you, you can't worry about the outcome. You just have to worry about performing. And that's, that's what, I, what I'm thinking coming into every fight. You know, I don't, I'm not thinking I'm going to win. I'm just thinking about performing and, and doing what I need to do to get the job done. Carlos, congratulations on your victory. Uh, you talked about the takedowns you gave up against St. Pierre and Hendricks. They're obviously two pretty good takedown artists. Did you see that as a, a chink in your armor? Were you working on it a lot before this fight? Uh, yeah, I definitely was. Um, you know, Martin is a very well-rounded fighter. He's a good striker, but he's also got good, you know, he's, he's good all around. So I knew that that was something I would have to, um, you know, work on quite a bit. Uh, I, I brought, you know, I worked with... Uh, Izzy Martinez, I worked with uh, Ricky Lindell, and I worked with uh, Jake Herbert, who was a, a 2012 Olympian on, on my wrestling. And, uh, you, know, I, I, you know, I was able to, you know, uh, defend some takedowns, you know, that I most likely wouldn't have been able to, you know, had I not worked with those guys. So, you know, a you know, lot, of, lot of thanks, a lot of gratitude towards them. And you're in a unique position, uh, having fought Sam Pierre and Hendricks. Can you share your thoughts on how you think their meeting in November will go? Um, you know, uh, Hendricks. You know, he's he's obviously a very dangerous guy. He can he can end a fight with one punch. Um, but I think George St. Pierre is 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 too technical. And also, you know, um, uh, Hendricks has has shown that he fades toward towards the end of the third, or you know, to, towards the third round. And now he's got two extra rounds to go. So. You know, I think uh, I think George is gonna you know prob probably take control towards the end of the fight and, and you know and, and come out on top. Over here, uh, just just for Kelvin, uh, could you over here upstairs, uh, if you can to to tell us about your performance tonight uh, tonight in Spanish. Um, what do you what do you want to know? Oh, about the submission, how you felt in the 170. Okay. Este, me sentí muy bien uh, entrando a la pelea, muy relajado y um, vea todo gracias a Dios me fue bien. Uh, Mike Deutsch has told us that you you might be able to fight in 155. Is that possible? <laughs> no, no creo. 
vamos a esperar a ver qué pasa este, estoy en una buena categoría en el peso welter y aquí me voy a quedar And just finally for, for Dana, is, is due to this, uh, that quick ending, is it possible that, that Kelvin could be at to the uh, Houston uh, show? I mean, there's a lot of Mexicans there. Yeah, no, I agree. But uh, yeah, Houston's, I think Houston's a little too close for him to fight again. <coughs> Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, Carlos here. We talked with Coach Valle during the week. He told us to watch out for your pace. That, what, that was one of the things you worked in camp. How did you achieve this pace? How did you control it during the fight? Just to not gas out and go hard for four rounds. Um, you know, it's it's all in the preparation. You know, we, you know, I worked really hard. I have an incredible strength and conditioning uh, regiment that I'm doing. You know, I'd have a place called uh, uh, Elevate Performance Health and Wellness in Albuquerque, and uh, you know, you know, we're working. You know, they're they're incredible trainers, but we're also working with sports physiologists and really dialing in um, and 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 fine tuning. Our, our training and you know I think that that's really made a difference and you know we're, we're training smarter as well as harder um, and then you know in, in on top of that I have you know just a great camp to to, um, uh, to get ready for these fights with and you know it, it all you know culminated in, in the win tonight and it looked to me that you were a little more cautious a little more clinical and just watching your space better using the leg better just to give into your range Uh, how did you apply this during the fight? Was it any different from the last fight? Uh, yeah, you know, r range is very important, of course. And, uh, you know, one, once I found my range, I was able to start landing. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, uh, uh, Martin Kamen, he's a, he's, you know, he's a kickboxer. And so that, that's a, a comfortable range for me. Um, you know, so, some of the other guys, you know, they, you know the, the last two guys I fought, you know, they're wrestlers. And, you know, they were able to close that distance. Um, so, yeah, you know, that's something that I still still have to work on. Martin was able to close the distance on me and take me down also. But, um, yeah, you know, it's, it's always a work in progress. Thanks. Carlos, did you feel any added pressure coming off the losses? Did you do anything different in your preparation for tonight's fight? Um, I trained harder. I trained more focused. Um, you know, I... I I didn't. I didn't let that. You know, the the thought of those last fights consume me. But I used um, the the. Uh, you know, I used the, the mistakes that I made in those fights um, as as teaching tools, and you know, and and really, you know, um, and you know, I was really motivated to improve in those aspects of the game that you know I was uh, lacking, basically. Martin, I know you mentioned that you were exhausted after the first round, but did you feel that the lacerations that you suffered and the cuts that you suffered, did that affect you at all? I know that, you know, it was, you know, in your vision, did that affect your vision at all? And did that play a factor during the course of the fight? Yeah, I mean, it's never fun to get cut in a fight, but I'm kind of used to it. I kind of get you cut every fight, you know. Um, I cut real easy, but at least I make good scars. So, but, you know, uh, I think, uh, you know, just... Uh, Being exhausted was, was the main thing. Dana, Darren started off uncharacteristically quick tonight. Do you feel that, you know, the, when you tell people, the fighters that you want them to see come out and, you know, immediately, you know, take charge of the fight, that, you know, the Bantamweight started off quick as well, that that's resonating with some of the fighters like Darren who want to start off quickly and assert themselves during the fight? Well, it's not that I ever tell the fighters I want them to come out and start off, you know, doing this or that. I just want, I want guys to, to come out and I'll, I'll give you a perfect example tonight is, is Bubba. When you know when you know you lost the first two rounds and you go out in the third round and there's no urgency whatsoever to win the fight, that, that, that's the kind of stuff that kind of drives me crazy. But I don't ever tell guys how to fight and just say, listen, you guys train hard. You're the best in the world. You're here at the UFC. Go out and perform tonight. That's what people are tuning in for. That's what people bought tickets for. And that's why people are here. People want to see you do what you do. And, uh, you know, it's, 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 about, it's about performing. I don't ever tell guys to start off or do this or do that. It's just, just perform. Darren, one more quick one for you. Do you feel like you're still flying under some people's radars? And if you do feel like that, what can you do besides you know just winning fights to, to change that? Um, I feel like I'm starting to come out of the radar a little bit, but I'm still a little bit under the radar. Um, Obviously, I mean, tonight was a more of an exciting fight, but I think, you know, I, I still got to work on finishing some fights. Obviously, you finish fights, you get more uh, more publicity, so I'm going to, you know, just keep working that. But Hayoki's a tough guy. You know, he's never been finished, so 
I, I was trying to push the pace and try to put it on him, but you know he's really technical, so it was, it was hard to do that tonight. Did you, did you feel like there was a point where you were close to finishing him or, or you were putting yourself in a position to maybe get there? I, I felt like I had the third round, he was starting to gas, and I was starting to land some good ground and pound, but you know he has good wrist control, and I tried to pass his guard, and he got it right away. So I really don't think he was ever in danger of being finished, but I landed some a lot more shots in the third round. Then, uh, can you let us know that uh, you are impressed about Takeya Mizugaki's fight and his performance tonight? Yeah, finally, a Japanese guy got the right decision here, you know? I, th I seriously thought, I was like, if this kid gets robbed of this fight, this is going to be crazy. He looked good. I, I, I absolutely thought he won the fight, and I don't think it was a split decision. I think that uh, you know, he's a bit, he is a very rare case of, as a Japanese fighter. He can make uh, fireworks you know, against uh, you know, American or Brazilian fighter. How was the impression about his performance? He can do what? Fireworks. You know, Japanese fighter always you know, making the distance and they don't like a fireworks exchange punch. Yeah, no, he, he goes in, he mixes it up, uh, he throws big shots. You know, he's, he's exciting, he's fun to watch. That, that was a fun fight, you know, I was just... I was really hoping the kid wasn't going to get, get screwed because it looked like he was gone. Right. Thank you. Um, Manolo Menendez from Prensa Hispana. Uh, Dana, um, what do you think about Goyito Perez' performance tonight? Does it change any uh, idea uh, about, uh, about him that you have? About whose? Uh, Goyito, Goyito yeah. Perez. Yeah. So, so what, about it? what about his performance? Yeah, what do you think about his performance tonight? Yeah, like I said, he went out against a tough kid who was who was coming after him, and uh, you know I, I don't think the fight was was as close as the judges had it. Uh, you know, that's what happens. You, you know, uh, you never know. You never know when it's not going to be your night. All right, thanks. And Carlos, um, in case that you are next in the title shot, uh, is there any prefer preference that you have either by your style? Or because you want a revenge or something, uh, on Pierre Henriks. Mm, you know, of course, I'd I'd like to rematch. You know, b both guys. Um, but I'm I w I'm kind of leaning towards uh, Johnny Hendricks just because our fight was so close. Um, you know, you know, I, I I came real close to a finish with George, so I don't know. It's it's you know, it's a tough question, but you know, I don't know. You know, we'll, we'll see what happens. Thank you. Carlos, you've had a lot of signature wins in your career. You defended the WC title multiple times. You beat Nick for the interim title. Now you've won this main event on Fox Sports 1, the second ever card on Fox Sports 1. Where do you rank this in terms of your other fights? Um, you know, it, it's up there. You know, it, you know, the opportunity to fight on the main event on, you know, on a big card like this is, is, is always, you know, it's... Uh, it's awesome, and uh, you know I, I performed. You know I'm, I'm happy with my performance tonight, um, and it, you know it's you know I can't I can't uh, really rest on my laurels. I gotta you know keep moving forward, look look towards the the next fight, and uh, you know look to see what I have to do to improve. And you told us in the media workout on Monday that you felt that five rounds was playing to your favor. It seemed like it went that way. You know fourth round you had a lot of energy left. Was that your impression as well? Yeah, I did. I did have a lot of energy, and yeah, I mean, I've I've been in those championship rounds, um, you know, you know, a couple times in my career, and uh, you know, endurance has has always been a um, a tool and, and a weapon for for me. You know, I, I have good endurance, and um, you know, you know, as good as a guy is, you know, when when they get tired, you know, that's you know, that's uh, that sucks. <laughs> Yeah, but that's that's the question, of course. Is you get that GSP rematch, are you going to be able to tire him out? We'll see. We'll see. You know. All right. And uh, Martin, how many stitches did it take to close up that cut? I don't know. I didn't count. <laughs> but um, I'm sure I got a few. How are you feeling overall? I'm more 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 than anything. I'm disappointed. You know, I, I felt I could uh, I felt I could go in and get a win against Carlos, but uh, tonight he was the better man and. Um, you know, congrats to him. I'm, I'm, I'm just disappointed. You know. What about a rubber match? Would you like to do it one more time? Sure. Dana, is that going to happen? Not right now. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, in the future, obviously. But sure, in the future, like three years from now, we're going to make that fight. <laughs> <laughs> All right, every four years we get okay. that fight. That's not a bad deal. Uh, question for Carlos Condit. Uh, Carlos, did you feel any tension in your 
here in your dressing room uh, after you your teammates lost three free fights tonight um no not really you know what like we, we train as a team but this is an individual sport you know i you know you know your your teammates win sometimes they lose sometimes it doesn't matter you got to focus on what you you know what you came to do your task and um you know i, I in the back of my mind i didn't want to make it you know you know oh and four for for the jackson's camp uh so you know it, it, the thought came to mind but you know it's it's an individual sport honestly and question for Dana White. Um, how, what do you think about Dylan Andrews tonight and his performance? He lost two rounds, and in the third round he came out with injury, and he came out so, so, so great. He came out so what? So, so good, so great. He, he knocks Papi Abedi out. Yeah, about not knocking him out? Yeah. Yeah. Well, he, he looked horrible the entire fight until he knocked him out. But he was injured, so what do you think about him uh, as a fighter, you know, about his performance? It's a weird situation. He had a horrible night, yet he had a great night. You know, he looked like shit. <laughs> then he gets the knockout. That's kind of weird, huh? But that's how it works sometimes. Thank you. This is for Dana. Hatsu Aoki, was it long ago, you know, when he came in, we were talking Jose Aldo, potential title fight. The kids lost, you know, three straight, but they've been really close fights. And he, ha he hasn't looked bad. He's just lost. Right. You know, usually three's the magic number. So, you know, where do you, you know, look at a, I mean, where does Hayoki stand in your opinion? Well, he had a good night tonight, you know. Um, and, and we were just saying that a minute ago. He, he's a really tough guy. Um, and he was in a really tough fight tonight with another tough, with another tough kid. Um, and, and he finally got the win. I'm just happy that it worked out for him. Because for some reason, you know, a lot of the Japanese guys don't get the best decisions in the UFC for some reason. And uh, he got it tonight, and he deserved it. I, I don't think it was as close as the judges had it. I had him win in the fight, and it wasn't, I didn't have it a split decision. Uh, I was talking, uh, not Mizugaki. Oh, Aoki. oh, 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 yeah, 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 okay. <laughs> That's okay. all right. You know, uh, so yeah, I just want to know what you kind of, where you place him now, even though those are really tough fights he's had with Lamas, Guida, and now Darren, you know, uh, you know where does he stand? Well, it's never good when you lose <laughs> when you lose three, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, he, he's a tough guy, and, and normally you, you, you'll see with a lot of guys who 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 come and bring it and fight. Well, you normally don't, you know, you know, fight a couple fights and get cut when, when you really do come and fight. So I don't know. We'll we'll see what happens. And then one for Carlos. Uh, I know every fight's important, but you seem to really embrace the urgency of this particular fight. You know, in the pre-fights talking about do or die. You know, the bigger picture. You know, uh, how did that motivate you uh, going into this camp and knowing what was on the line in this fight? Um, you know, I, I, I didn't want three, three losses in a row, and then I, I definitely didn't want, you know, two, two losses to, to Martin. You know, I, I, you know the, the first fight was, was really close, um, and, you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't want it to be close. I wanted to come out and, and make a statement. Um, and uh, yeah, in, 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 in preparation, that was, that was a, a big, uh, um, I don't know, a big motivation for me. And um, it was just, it went well, you know, it, it was my night. So. For Kelvin, uh, it, it's interesting seeing you up here doing so well. 11 days ago, a man you're gonna be linked with for a very long time, Uriah Hall, didn't do very well. I know you train with him now, do you have any idea why he's having such a tough time in the UFC? I have no idea. You know, um, I've trained with him. He performs great in practice. He's kicking everybody's ass. And I have no idea what happened in his fight. Did you talk to him afterwards? I said to him a text, but, um, and he wished me good luck for my fight. Other than that, I haven't talked to him. Do you think he's lacking some kind of killer instinct? Do you think he's... He's missing something when he goes in there. Uh, yeah, most likely. You know, it's 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 mental, definitely. You know, um, he's got to find that, make that switch. You know, that you to go into that cage. Martin, in, in discussing just running out of gas so early, is that something that you've ever experienced before in a fight? I mean, I've gotten tired in a lot of fights before, but um, you know. That's 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 what happens when you're fighting, you know, and and then uh, trying to go go in there and get the 
you know, going hard. You know, we, I think we kept a pretty pretty high pace the whole fight, and uh, that gets you tired. But um, yeah, I definitely felt I was I was tired, and especially in the fourth round. And Carlos got me with uh, something to the body, and you know that, that took the last last uh, gas out of me. And Carlos, uh, obviously, he was he was still fighting back the whole time. I mean, could you tell that he was as tired as you know he he says he was now? Could you could you could you sense that as you were fighting? Um, yes, I mean, some something was up. Yeah, you know, I I actually yeah, you know, to be honest, going going into the second, um, yeah, he looked he looked tired. He did. One we'll do one more. One question for you, Dana. Go ahead, buddy. One word to describe tonight. One word. I, I'm happy with tonight. It's great fights. You know, uh, a, a lot of young, up-and-coming talent look good tonight, and a lot of uh, 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 veterans look good tonight. So it was a great night. Very happy. Crowd was great. Place was great. A lot better than last time. Thank you guys so much for coming. We appreciate it. Have a good night.